One thing that you can count on in the spring is going to be inconsistent weather. It's hot one day, it's cloudy and rainy and cold the next, it's windy. It doesn't seem like it really sets up in those really long extended warming periods. But when you do get a warming period, that is definitely the time that you want to be out chasing, chasing largemouth. Put down the trolling motor, put on some power fishing baits, just start covering water, and at the end of the day, a lot of times you'll be amazed at how many fish you catch. Power fishing, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Whew. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. Ooh, dear, good fish. That looks like a good one. Feels like a good one. Ugh. It feels so good. I just want to leave them, leave them pull in the water. I doubled up. I got a good one too, Al. Right. I think we found a little honey hole. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tail him down here real quick. Oh, look like cookie cutters. Hey, but that's fun. Cookie I'll take cutters. It. Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> oh, yours is way bigger than mine. I didn't get a look at it. Well, that's a Come nice here, little tub. Oh, you bet you it is. Huh? That's a nice one. Look at yeah. that fat. That little sucker is, Jer. <laughs> Woo! That was fun. That was fun. You know, if you fish a lot of bass, you've heard the term power fishing. And what does it mean? Well, ba basically what it sounds like, covering a lot of water fast. And uh, you're doing it with moving baits, horizontal baits. And it's, it's really its most productive early in the season, spring of the year. And uh, uh, there's a variety of, of, of baits you can use for this, this style of fishing. You, you know, you got swim jigs and boot tails and jerk bait, bait baits and, and spinner baits and, and vibrating jigs. These are real common. And uh, uh, early in the year, if you follow a lot of the tournaments, big tournaments like Bass and FLW as an example, you see that they have a lot of tournaments in spring of the year. Why? Because guys are catching a lot of fish. A lot of fish have moved up in the deep water and spread all over the shallow water flats. And there are individual fish here, there are different kind of cover patterns depending on where you're at. There's shallow water wood, there's shallow water rocks, different types of weeds. And uh, uh, that the presentation day in and day out, if you look at the statistics early in the year, most of the time, most of the fish are taken on moving baits where you can cover water. That's the idea. Just imagine those fish have been wintered down in deep water. Water starts getting into the upper 40s, 50 degrees, like we're in 50 degrees here. All of a sudden they start coming up and they start spreading out like this. And the idea is just beat water, beat water, beat water. Yeah, you can get a certain kind of pattern, but that's what the, a power fishing amounts to in a nutshell. And uh, it's a fun way. For me, Jer, I love doing it, man. We're power fishing for bass right now, and the concept of power fishing doesn't just apply to a springtime bass situation like we're in right now. In fact, we use the power fishing approach for just about everything that swims in fresh water. Power fishing. Rolling up your sleeves and getting after any species of fish can be very advantageous. Fish are fish and they have to feed. Your job is to cover water and force them to commit. You got one. Here are some examples of how we use power fishing for some alternate fish species. When most people think about bluegills, it's floats and live baits. Yeah, that works, but if you want to try something really fun, try topwater fishing for them. Oh. Last spring, Dan and I got on a topwater bite that was mind-boggling. We probably caught 20 bluegills that were over a pound on topwater baits. Bluegills can be very aggressive and will come from 10 feet or more to hit these lures. And oh man, is it fun. Hey, how about catfish? Many people use dead baits sitting on the bottom to trigger bites, and it works. But a couple of years ago, James and Nick Lindner did a show on power fishing for cats. These guys were spot hopping up and down the river using walleye spinner rigs and heavy current. They just crushed the giant catfish and it was a real eye-opening experience. What about walleyes, you might ask? Traditionally, fishermen drag live bait around basins for a bite or two. 
Over the last five years, we've been beating up on the walleyes with the jig and wrap. This power fishing approach to walleye fishing has revolutionized the industry. Over the next few days, we're gonna be chasing after several different bass species, white bass, smallmouth bass, and largemouth bass. Chances are, we'll be power fishing for all three. The point of all this is you don't have to move slow to get bit. Sometimes speed is the ultimate aphrodisiac for fish. Point's got some fish on it though, it looks like. Large and in charge. Come here, bucko. There we go, how about that, huh? Chowing down on a jerk bait. There is something magic about catching a fish, isn't there? After a long winter, getting out, getting bed, it just puts a smile on your face. It's a good, good deal. This segment is brought to you by Lund Boats, the ultimate fishing experience. You know, we're kind of starting to look at a lot of ground. This is one of those lakes, it's really a bowl, but there's some subtle, subtle elements to the lake. We've got one shoreline that drops into 10 feet right off, the, right off the bank, and those are likely, you know, that's a great spot to fish in the fall, and it's another great spot that doubled up. Oh, I lost that one. And another great spot to fish right away in the spring, right after ice out when the water's still really cold. And then naturally the next spot you want to look at is those shallow flats. So we'll do a little rip around this whole side of the lake here is real shallow and leading up into that we got that really sharp, sharp drop. So those are the two places we'll look at in a lake, you know, that's really pretty much doesn't have a lot of features to it. There's not a lot of points or there's no sunken humps or anything like that in here. It's a really simple lake, but those are the spots that we're going to check out. Yeah, we'll, we'll tell and down, 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 we catch a fish or two and then <coughs> fan cast an area. If the fish are not coming off of a very targeted piece of shallow water cover, yeah, you know, and when we get a fish a little ways out on a flat flat, we'll drive, we'll, we'll, we'll tail and down and then fan cast that area, say in a three to six foot area, fan cast and cover some water. And you'd be surprised, you got a little pot of moving fish and you can catch six, seven, eight, ten fish from one tail and down spot. And then you kind of burn the activity, lift it up and keep going again. If you're target fishing, you know, side of a dock, clumps of weeds that you could see, bush, bushes, uh, uh, stumps, that's a different story. Yeah, you know, then you just keep moving. You're, you're fishing one fish spots. You get a little further out on that flat and you can have, you know, pods of fish coming in. There's a nice one, rattling them up. Al said, I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a nice one right before we get to this spot, and I might have cut them off. Ha! Uh huh? Oh! Come here. They're largey, huh? Isn't that a beauty? They're just fat. I mean, not a giant bass, but just look how fat they are this time of year in the spring. Just beautiful. And you know, when we talk about power fishing, usually you're talking about bait casting equipment that's that's what you're throwing a lot of the, the rattle baits with the spinner baits and and that type of deal of course we throw we throw jerk baits on spinning equipment quite a bit of the time but for a lot of this this style of fishing I tell people if you're gonna go bass fishing and you just wanted to get one rod combo a bait caster this six foot ten medium extra fast action is just dynamite for so many applications I can throw light jigs with this rod I can throw crank baits, I can throw you know rattle baits of course. And I've got this spooled up with this is a this is a zillion. This is like the sweetest combo that you're ever gonna fish. A Daiwa Zillion uh, SV and it's got this free floating spool on here. I can throw like a four inch weightless Senko on this thing and never backlash. The pinion gear separates from the spool on the cast so the spool's free floating and you can't backlash it. Now you combine that with the Legend Elite and you've got the lightest rod and reel combo I've, I've ever held in my life. This thing is an incredible. You don't have to spend this kind of money to get good equipment, but this is hands down the nicest piece of machinery that you're ever gonna hold in your hand and catch a bass with. It's really, really good stuff. Now, on the spinning side of the deal, it's really the same, same type of a deal. It's that medium extra fast action. That's what we're doing so much of our power fishing with. 
Here I've got this on the 6, 610 uh, medium extra fast Legend Elite with the ballistic. Again, about the nicest rod and reel you'll ever hold in your life. But if you're looking for something that's a little more value price, that's almost the nicest rod and reel you've ever held in your life, this is a 6 foot 8 Avid X medium extra fast action with the Revros reel. This is a $50 reel and you pick it up and it feels like it's about $500. Combined with that Avid X, man, you've got just a sweet setup. A couple bait casters, a couple spinning rods on the deck, and you've got everything you need to catch largies power fishing. These spring type baits we're talking about actually just fall into, they fall into three categories. You got your hard baits, uh, jerk baits, lipless crank baits, square bills. Yeah, you know, that's be one main category. Then you got your flash and vibration type baits, like a spinner bait or a, a vibrating jig, that type of stuff. And then you got uh, 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 your swim baits, you know, and that's a soft bait on a variety of different kind of. Uh, uh, head shapes that do different kind of things. In fact, in the past few years, in a world of bass fishing, the explosion of soft swim baits and combinations of, of them have really become popular. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Power fishing can really be as simple as just cast and wind, reel it in and catch fish, and, and, and it does work. But there's always, you know, with fishing, there's always little subtle, subtle secrets to it. Now, what I'm throwing right now is, is the lipless crankbait, the Rapala Rip and Ramp. This is one of my favorite all-time lipless cranks. And the thing that I love about this bait so much is how versatile it is in covering water, you know. So I can throw this thing up to a foot of water and I'll just keep my rod tip high. There's one right there. I'm just hammering the, the little guys. But, it, but by keeping my rod tip high and running the reel a little bit faster, I'm able to run the bait in a foot or two of water. Now, if I want to fish this bait deep, I can easily run this bait out into, say, you know, eight, 10 feet of water simply by adjusting my rod angle. So if I wanted to fish deep, I'm going to cast it out and I'll just keep my rod angle a little bit lower and I can count the bait down. With lip, lipless cranks too, I'm adjusting the reel a lot of the time so I'll wind kind of quick and I'll slow down and I'll pick it up. It's a little more subtle, especially in that cold water, just by pausing the reel and maybe picking it up a little more. The fish seem like they like that little just slow hesitation in the retrieve as opposed to using the rod tip to really rip the bait. Every one of these style of baits uh, has some little nuances that uh, uh, you, you can add to it to catch a few more fish. Like on, if, if I'm on a swim jig or a, a soft swim bait of any kind, you, you, you know, you reel it steady and all of a sudden sometimes you just kick up speed just a little bit. I'll do it with the reel handle too. You know, get it out. You're, generally, if most of the cast, it's a steady retrieve or one, one speed that you're pretty comfortable with. A lot of times those bass are following that thing. You could pause and drop it. I'll just occasionally just stop the reel for a second. The jig will stop, fall, touch, and then and move again. Sometimes I'll just increase the speed just a little. You know, just go. Doo -doo. You know, those are those little nuances. Anything that changes the cadence of of any of these style of baits is a plus. You know, that's what triggers the fish to bite. Jerk baits naturally got a a ton of action. In, into it, especially that shadow rep that almost does a 180 in a lot of cases. So there's a lot of little things you do with the bait. And sometimes the simplest thing, cast and retrieve, is all that you have to do. So you let the fish tell you what they want. Keep moving and grooving. So if you're into moving and grooving and you're a cable drive user, like I often am, here's a great little deal that Minkota makes. It's the premium cable and handle. So if you're used to pulling a trolling motor up multiple times a day. I'm sure you've had it happen where the rope ends up wearing. This is an accessory that Minkota sells and it's actual cable. This thing is bulletproof so no more having to worry about pulling the cord and having it rip. Install this thing, you're good for life. You gotta point me where you want me to start, Jerry. You're picking the last spot before the rain comes. 
Go up in the corner and let's drift across. Corner where we started. Where we started and drift across. You know, electronics technology right now is just, it's just amazing what, what's available out there and what you can use to find fish. So in this boat right now, I've got a Helix 9 set up in the bow and a Helix 12 in the back. I've got more screen real estate than, a, than an IMAX movie theater in here. But the cool thing about what I've got on, on this unit now, and this is the first year I've used this, is I've got the Humminbird 360 transducer mounted on the bow. And I ran into some guys last fall out bass fishing and they told me, they said, yeah, I had to, I had to have an, a 360 overnighted last night because mine, I had pro I broke mine. I was like, you gotta be, you gotta be kidding me. It's that important. He goes, I wouldn't bass fish without 360. He said, to me, it's like going, it's like going ice fishing without a flasher. I was like, you gotta be kidding. So I put it on this year and the little bit of fishing I've done, it's really cool on these shallow flats. It's been mostly shallow water fishing. When there's really nothing around, you can see those little depressions, if you know what I'm talking about, those little rhizome holes. If you uh, do much largemouth fishing and you get on these shallow flats, see these dark spots? These are little divots up on those flats. And in the spring, man, just little like six inch, one foot holes in the flat can hold, hold a ton of fish. So that's cool, I can see this stuff out ahead of me. That, that just helps me pinpoint where I wanna be casting. See, and I've even found schools of crappies so far this spring, just running around in the flats. So another amazing piece of technology that some guys have been using for quite a while. I'm just getting my feet wet with, but uh, man, is it really, really cool and powerful stuff. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. What a fun inaugural spring fishing trip. We left three days ago not knowing what to expect. We got after the largemouth fishing rattle baits, spinners, and swim baits. The fish were scattered but biting, and that was a good thing. Some nasty weather came in, but that didn't stop us. We went after white bass, power fishing them with jerk baits. Apparently white bass don't care about storm fronts. After the weather blew itself out, we had one of the most memorable smallie fishing days I can remember. Numbers of fours, fives, and six pound fish chewing the paint off our jerk baits. And yes, we were power fishing all three days. Got him. Nice yeah. one. Good one. Yeah. Just a oh, nice yeah. one again. Not, you know, not a, a curious, but been a, producing some nice yeah. fish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, come here. But for early in the year, this has been, been a lot, a lot of fun. Just really a lot of fun. I love cr cranking like this. You know, just put, put down the trolling motor, put on some power, uh, power fishing baits, just start covering water. And at the end of the day, a lot of times you'll be amazed at how many fish you catch. This kind of bite will continue all the way throughout the early season. Yeah, you know, pre-spawn, spawn, in, in, up till pre-spawn or spawn. When that happens, everything changes and a whole lot of different pre presentations come into play. You know, further south you live, this bite can go as long as three months. You live up by us, we got, oh, maybe a month like this. Things change fast further north, but power fishing, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Whew. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was at a funeral for a very close friend of mine. And uh, uh, over the years, his family and our family were extremely, extremely close. And uh, uh, we've had an opportunity to work together in the beginning of our careers on a lot, a lot of different kind of projects. And they were very, very successful. He and his family tended to go into the uh, sales marketing end of the fishing tackle industry. And my family, we kind of moved more into the media end of the sport fishing community. Yet we've been in close contact pretty much all our lives. Ron's sons have fished tournaments with his sons and still do. 
and uh, we've kept close contact. And uh, uh, at his passing, the family gave me a call and asked me if I would share some things. And I was really blessed by that. And uh, just to give you a little background on my friend, he is not what you would consider uh, uh, a religious person. Yet, like many people, he was sensitive to the things of God. And in his latter years, he was dealing with some, some health issues, some serious health issues. And a lot of times we'd get on the phone together, I would talk to him, he'd talk to me, and we'd always talk about fishing first. And then the family and the kids and the husbands and wives, how's everybody doing, da, da, da. And every once in a while, the conversation would lead into the things of the Lord. And uh, uh, I was really happy that he respected and knew that my faith was an important part of my life and he felt comfortable talking to me about it. And you know, the things we chatted about, uh, uh, one of them, and I remember distinctly, he asked me about the Bible and he had some basic understanding it about the Bible, like many people do. And uh, he said, yeah, there's a lot of it I don't understand. And I said, hey, 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 don't worry, but there's a lot that I don't understand, but there's a lot that I do understand. And the basic premise of it is really simple. And I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I told him, and I've shared this with many people that said, what does all of this mean? This, this book is this thick, beginning to end. What does it all mean? Simple to me. And, and as I shared with my friend, I said, this is the story that God is sharing with you. He's telling you how much he loves you, cares about you, wants to spend eternity with you. That's why he sent his son Jesus to die for the sins of mankind. And a confession of faith in him as Lord and Savior opens up the gates of heaven. That's what this whole thing is about in Al's very simple definition. Now, Ted was a smart man. He had a lot of street savvy. When I shared that with, with him, you know, he knew a good deal when he seen and heard a good deal. And he says, Al, I'm all in, man. What do we do? And I prayed together with him a number of times through his latter years and particularly when he was dealing with a lot of health issues. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because of the promises in this book, he's fishing in heaven right now. I'm convinced of that. And I just considered it a, really bless a real blessing to be a part of his life and a friendship that we had together all these years. Hey, I had to share that with you from all of us here at The Edge. You have a good fishing season and we'll see you on the water.